You are most welcome, our dear friends. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Kaudi Robert. I would like uh, to share with you another subject uh, regarding the topic we started with, the Church on Apostolic Foundation. But uh, the, the point we are going to discuss today uh, it concerns the prediction of the work of reformation to be carried forward. And before we continue with our uh, point, allow me to pray. We come before your holy presence, dear gracious Savior. Thank you for this precious time that you've granted us to be enlightened by the light of your word, O Lord. May the Holy Spirit abide with us as we talk to your people. And we pray for those who are listening to us, O Lord. Allow them to receive the light from your word. That's my humble prayer through the dear name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, you're welcome again. As I have just told you, the point we need to talk about in this lesson is the prediction of the work of reformation. Uh, there is need of a spiritual reformation and a spiritual revival in current Christian experience. And this work was foretold by the prophet Amos in the book Amos chapter 9 verse 11. Uh, through the spirit of prophecy, foretold these words. It says, On that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down, and repair its damages. I will raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old. In a prophetic utterance, the prophet gave this statement referring to the work of God, the principles of faith that had been cast aside, that had been uh, uprooted, the time would come in God's due time to send messengers to rebuild the pillars of faith that had been uh, uprooted by then. This is the work of reformation foreshadowed through these prophetic utterances. I would like to remind you that throughout the history of the church, God has been sending his people uh, to carry forward the work of reformation whenever circumstances demanded it. Whenever the principles of faith had been cast aside, God has been sending his messengers uh, to do the work of reformation. And before we come deep into this, let me read uh, other verses of the Bible to prove this fact. I would like to read in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 6 and verse 16. Jeremiah was sent to stand as a reformer to the people of his time, not because they were not worshiping God, but some of the uh, pillars of faith, some of the principles of faith had been ignored or had been slighted. It's therefore, Jeremiah was sent with this call, which is written in the book, Jeremiah chapter and verse mentioned above. 
chapter 6 and verse 16. Here the Bible says, Thus said the Lord, Stand in the ways and see, and ask for all for the old path, where the good way is, and walk in it. Then you find you will find rest for your souls. The burden of Jeremiah's message to the people of his time was to call people to stand in the old path and to ask where a good way is so that they may path therein. It was only through that condition people could meet the approval of God. The standing of all the path means studying the basic principles, are principles of faith given to man by God, so that we may, we may know and learn the proper way in which we should offer worship to God so that our worship may be acceptable to God to whom we adore. Uh, the prophet insisted that he ask where a good path is and they walk therein. What does this mean? It means that throughout the history of the church, God has been sending his truth to his people, but we need to know the proper way which God has commanded his people whereby to worship him. In offering our worship to God, contrary to the principles of worship given, the worship and the service we offer to God can never be accepted. That's why we need to have proof of every service we offer to God, whether it is done in accordance with the principles of worship given in the word of God. That's what it means, uh, the work of reformation, or to stand in the, in the old path and to walk in a good way. I would like to insist this fact by reading in the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 10. Uh, as we talk about the work of reformation, remember reformation means to bring back things in its natural state, in its origin state. Spiritual wise, it means that to stand in the pure truth of the principles of worship so that the services we offer to God may be offered in accordance with the will of God. So, whenever people have been worshipping God, contrary to the principles of, and the directions of his word, God could not tolerate such a worship, but God's messengers has been... Uh, had been sent had been sent to stand as reformers so that things may be brought in order that they may obtain God's approval. Now I, I read in Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 10. Here the Bible says, See, I, uh, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Jeremiah, as a reformer and a prophet, was sent for the purpose of doing two different things. To root out, to destroy, to pull down. And after that, he could build up, he could plant. What does this mean? When it comes to pull down, to destroy, it means that every prince, every principle which is not in accordance with the God's will, which is not in harmony with the directions of the word of God, must be pulled out from the faith of believers in order for the worshippers to obtain God's approval. Whenever worshippers worship God, but contrary to the directions of his word, contrary to the principles of faith given in the word of God, 
the work they offer to God cannot be accepted. That's why there is a need of pulling out, of destroying everything which is not in harmony with God's plan, but which is of man's devising. In order to understand this clearly, to understand this clearly, I would like to refer uh, the statement of Jesus Christ our Lord, Jesus himself. In the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 15 and verse 13, Jesus himself uh, referred to this fact as a principle which needs to be maintained in order that the service we offer to God may obtain God's approval. Here I read in Matthew chapter 15 and verse 13. I'd like you to fall very attentively. It says, But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted. Jesus, uh, when he was talking to his disciples, the disciples told him about the Pharisees that they, they were offended because of the teaching of Jesus to condemn their traditions and to condemn their customs which were contrary to the will of God. Jesus, when he had condemned them, the, the Pharisees got offended and the disciples feared lest antagonism could rise against Jesus. And they told him that, you know, that the Pharisees have been offended because of your teaching. In answer to them, Jesus told, to, told them that leave them alone. Every plant which my, my heavenly father has not planted shall be uprooted. This teaches us that it is in harmony with God's will and, in God, and with God's plan that every principle which is man-made, which has no divine credentials, must be pulled out, must be uprooted, and must be thrown away from the faith and the doctrines of the people of God in order that the worshippers may obtain the approval of God. That's what it means to uh, approve every plant which our Heavenly Father has not planted. That was the first uh, mission, the first part of Jeremiah's commission. He was to approve everything done in the church. He was to condemn everything maintained in the faith of believers, which was known in harmony with the directions and the commandments of God. Here, I would like to read a few words from the Spirit of Prophecy, the book Desire of Ages, which explains this fact, how it concerns us in our times. Yes, the Spirit of Prophecy in the explanation of the verse of Matthew 15, 13, where Jesus uh, said that every plant that my, our Heavenly Father has not planted is to be uprooted, the Spirit of Prophecy says that the substitution of the precepts of man for the commandments of God has not ceased. As it was in the Jewish times, so it is now. People are substituting the commandments of God for that of the commandments of God for that of men, which is very much dangerous in a Christian life and in a, and in a spiritual experience. Here the Bible, uh, the scripture continues, says, Even among the Christians are found institutions and usages that have no better foundation than the traditions of the fathers. This statement is very much true. Such institutions, resting upon mere human authority, have supplanted those of divine appointment. There are many examples which we may give and they will give in our following, less, uh, our following lessons of how the institutions and the usages of men 
have supplanted the principles given in the word of God. But the Savior says every, every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted is to be uprooted. This means that in the place of authority of the so-called fathers of the church, God bids us accept the word of eternal Father, the Lord of heaven and earth. He alone is the truth and mixed with the error. In the book of Psalms chapter 11 and verse 3, David, the saint of God, David, the anointed of God, asked himself a question which, need to, which we need to ask ourselves in our times. And the question is here. I would like to read it. He asks, If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The foundations here referred to are the principles of faith given in the word of God. When they are destroyed and uh, supplanted by man-made theories, man-made doctrines, we should not tolerate it and keep silence and leave matters without anything. When this happens, the only remedy which can be applied is the work of reformation which we are talking to, of which uh, many prophets foretold of its existence. Now I would like to come back. Jeremiah, when he was sent to the people of his time, he was not only to uproot, to destroy, but he, he was also to plant. He was also to build up, as it is indicated in the verse mentioned above. This means that the planting and the building up means the restoration of the principles which had been cast aside, bringing things on order and raising principles again so that the worshippers may meet God's approval. That is the work of reformation foretold that it must be carried forward in our time. I would like to read uh, other few statements in the spirit of prophecy in the book Prophets and the Kings as well as in the book of Christian Service to confirm what was foreshadowed in the verses already mentioned. The spirit of prophecy also uh, testifies the fact. In a prophetic vision, uh, this servant of God foresaw the work of reformation which God could carry out by his messengers as he did in the times of Jeremiah. Then she wrote, in the book of Prophets and the Kings, page 678, we read the statement here. In the time of the end, every divine institution is to be restored. Remember, we are learning predictions uh, of the work of reformation to be carried forward as it was indicated by the prophets of old. Now, in the book, uh, uh, Prophets and the Kings, page 678, uh, the scripture foretold the coming of this work of reformation in these words. It says, in the time of the end, every divine institution is to be restored. This means that every command of God is to be again exalted. The Sabbath of the fourth commandment is to be preached and proclaimed and exalted so that men may know the sanctity and the sacredness of this divine institution, lest 
uh, they be uh, measured to the balance and be found wanting or because of the of ignoring this sacred uh, command of God. The, bri the breach made in the law at the time the Sabbath was changed is to be repaired. God is, remnant, God is a remnant people standing before the world as reformers are to show that the law of God is the foundation of all enduring reform and that the Sabbath of the fourth commandment is to stand as a memory of creation, a constant reminder of the power of God. In clear distinct lines, they are to present the necessity of obedience to all the precepts of the Decalogue. According to the spirit of prophecy, as we near the end, and as we near the time for judgment, God wants his people to be perfect, and they can only meet the standard of perfection by complying with everyone of divine requirements. That's why, according to the will of God, our God wants the reformation to be carried forward so that people may get ready for this coming judgment. I'd like to finalize our lesson by quoting a few words in the spirit of prophecy, the book Christian Service, page 42. Here the Bible says that uh, revival and reformation must take a place among God's people. Revival and reformation must take a place among God's people. Revival and reformation are two different things. Revival signifies the renewal of a spiritual life, which means a spiritual renovation in the lives of the worshippers of God. Everything which is, which is contrary to moral values must be cast aside so that we may worship God in the purity and the beauty of perfection. And the reformation means the change of ideas, reorganization, so that every, plug, every service which is offered in the church may be done, every ordinance which is being done in the church may be carried forward in harmony with the will of God according to how God has commanded it should be done. May God bless you, dear brothers and listeners, and enlighten you so that we all may come uh, to understand God's will in this issue. May God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen.